coming uh, tonight. My name is Fred Nicholas. I think we're ready to get started here. Uh, and, and pardon me, but I'm going to do some reading right off of my sheet so I don't forget any very important points. Um, I'm a citizen of La Crosse, a business owner, and like many, I have concerns about what increased rail traffic through God's country means to us. Before we begin, I think that it's important for everyone here tonight to understand that this is a meeting about the health, safety, and quality of life in our area, as well as the health, safety, and quality of life of our neighbors around the state and country. It's also important to know that this exact meeting is happening in towns all across the country because people everywhere are very concerned. A couple Sundays ago, an article about these issues and this meeting appeared in the La Crosse Tribune. I read some of the comments after the article and remember a few of the people responding by calling those who wrote the article liberals and a few other choice words. I think that it's important that we are clear about why we are here tonight. It doesn't matter whether you consider yourself a Democrat or a Republican, a liberal or a conservative. Tonight we are here to come together and talk about what is best for our community. Increased train traffic and the dangerous materials being shipped on those trains concerns all of us, no matter our political persuasion or our views on the environment. We are here tonight as a community with concerns, to voice those concerns, and to continue to work on a plan to accomplish what is reasonable for our area and our citizens. We have asked you here tonight for your help, your ideas, and your passion for this wonderful, wonderful area that we all call God's country. Thanks again for being here, and with that, I'll turn it over to Maureen. Thank you. Thank you all for being here, and those of you who didn't get a chance to sign in, we would really appreciate it if you would do that on your way out and make sure that we have your email addresses. Um, first, I would like to introduce ourselves. We are CARS, Citizens Acting for Rail Safety, a new regional community group. I'm going to read the names of our steering committee, and I'd like each of you to stand and wave and as I call your name. Uh, we have Irv Balto. No, we don't need to clap now. Thank you. <laughs> Carolyn Jenkins, Curtis Miller, Fred Nicholas, George Nygaard, Rich Pine, Karen Ringstrom, Jeff Saxton, Sexton, excuse me, Alan Stankowitz, Guy Wolf, and Bruce Putmichael. We'd like to extend a warm welcome and recognize the public officials and staff members who are here tonight. So as I call your name or your group, would you please stand up and, and wave or something? Um, La Crosse Mayor Tim Cabot. <laughs> Esteemed leaders of the Ho-Chunk Nation, we have Damian Thundercloud and Henning Garvin. We have John Mettinger for Senator Tammy Baldwin. Uh, we, do we need to clap? No. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Cannonberg for Representative Ron Kind. State Senator Jennifer Schilling. Uh, Representative Steve Doyle and Representative Jill Billings are both out of town tending to college age daughters, but they've sent their their support and their welcome for this evening. We have County Board Chair Tara Johnson. And from the county, we also have Ron Chamberlain, our Highway Commissioner. I believe Charlie Handy may be here. He's our County Planner. We have Keith Butler, who is the Emergency Management Coordinator for the county. We have Jackie Eastwood with the Metropolitan Planning Office. And then we have City of La Crosse Council members. Uh, I recognize coming in Fran Formanic and Doug Happel. You're supposed to be standing. Yes. <laughs> Bob Sequist. Uh, we have Police Chief Tisher here. I don't know if there are any other um, council members from the City of La Crosse. Peg Jerome is here. And we have Audrey Cotter back there, Bob Sequist, I, I think I mentioned. From the uh, county board, I recognized coming in Vicki Burke and Sharon Hampson, again, Peg Jerome, Patrick Barlow, 
uh, Dan Ferries, and I don't know if anybody else has come in. If you have, please stand. We appreciate that. And if you're a staff member from one of our local cities, villages, or towns, I may not recognize you, but please also stand. We'd appreciate that. A um, couple people. Okay, thank you all for coming. Now, tonight in the next 70 minutes, oh, wait a minute, I forgot two names at the bottom. Mike Easy and Jeff Schrader I saw come in from the county board also. Sorry, you didn't speak up. Tonight, in the next 70 minutes, we're going to do five things in particular. We're going to summarize what we know. We're going to watch a short video about a town that's facing similar challenges. We're going to hear from as many of you as we possibly can. We're going to complete a survey so we can tell what we want in numbers. And we're going to practice advocating for what we want. So first, I'll turn this over again to Fred to uh, tell us what we, what we know. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Alrighty, folks, here are some things that we know. Uh, what I'm going to share with you are not theories or what we believe to be true, but these are hard facts. The BNSF plans to begin construction of a new rail bed this fall on the west side of the tracks and lay the rail in 2015. It would be about four miles of track beginning just north of Central High School and end in the rail yard just north of Logan High School. BNSF says that they want the second rail to allow more efficient flows of trains through our region, and that wouldn't necessarily lead to more trains because they have contracts. But needless to say, contracts can change. There's a lot of oil waiting to be transported. If a second rail is laid, we should expect an increase in traffic. In addition, we will also have the vibration and noise of two simultaneous trains. The number of trains on Burlington Northern's line has increased to about 75 a day through La Crosse. This is in contrast to 21 trains in 1995. For those of us who live near the tracks will tell you we already have a problem. In the last five years, the number of carloads of Bach and oil has grown from 9,500 9, to 400,000. That is a 40-fold increase. Frack sand is being sent from Wisconsin, Minnesota, and other places to the Bakken Range in North Dakota and Montana. Bakken oil is being transported east to refineries throughout the country. About six to nine Bakken oil trains run through Minneapolis-St. Paul a day. We know that many of them come through La Crosse. If one oil train comes through here a day, that is three million gallons of oil. If six trains come through, that is 18 million gallons of oil. People are worried about the safety of tankers and the hazardous material they contain. The press reported that there was an average of one oil train derailment a month in 2013, and more crude oil spilled in 2013 than in the previous 37 years combined. The USDOT also reported crude rail incidents climbed from 9 in 2010 to 108 in 2013. The AAR touts a 99% plus safety record of all shipments of hazardous materials getting to their destination without a spill. But with the huge increase in oil by rail, this safety record certainly is in jeopardy. Most tankers, the DOT 111s, are not properly built. According to the Association of American Railroads, about 85% of the tankers used to move flammable liquids are not safe. The U.S. government has known about DOT 111 safety issues for about 20 years. Tanker skins are too thin to withstand most derailments, plus they corrode and leak. We have to get them off the tracks. The financial cost to the city of La Crosse could be in the millions. At taxpayers' expense, sewer and water mains would have to be moved. A second rail would impact over 30 utility locations in La Crosse. The two pedestrian crossings on the golf course would be closed. The golf course itself would be closed or rebuilt on the east side of the tracks if the city can afford it. The need for a tunnel or bridge to access the golf course and Hickson Forest would be very costly for the city. Medians and sidewalks at Main Street, Cass Street, and Farnham Street would have to be redone to maintain the quiet zone status at city expense. <coughs> 